Welcome to my channel, where we talk about all things Gran Turismo 7. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a topic that affects all racers, big or small, experienced or not, tuning crutches. These are the quick fixes that might improve your lap times, but they aren't necessarily the best solutions. They limit the overall performance of your vehicle and can prevent you from reaching your full potential. So let's get started and talk about how to identify and avoid these crutches. Let's start by looking at this diagram of a car and the different parts that can be adjusted to improve handling. As we go through the video, we'll be discussing how these parts can affect the handling of a car and how certain adjustments can become crutches. I remember when I first started racing, I had a hard time getting my car to handle properly on tight corners. I sought advice from more experienced racers and they suggested adding ballast to the rear of the car. I tried it and it seemed to work, but as I continued to race, I found that it was actually limiting my straightaway speed. I soon realized that this was a crutch and not a proper solution. I know what you're thinking, but wait, I thought adding ballast to the rear of my car was supposed to make it handle better. Well, it's like that time I tried to fix a leaky faucet with duct tape. It worked for a little bit, but eventually it made things worse. I've been tuning my own cars for years, and I've learned that it's important to rely on solid theory to support suspension changes, not just copy and paste tunes. I've seen firsthand how crutches can limit the performance of the car and a driver. A few examples of these crutches would be driving styles, like throwing the car into a corner to loosen it up, excessive ballast to change the weight distribution, super stiff front springs, lots of brake bias, and many, many more. We could talk about these crutches all day, but let's focus on the most important ones. These are the ones that affect the three main times a car is prone to have handling issues. Upon entry to a turn, at the apex of a turn, and upon exit of the turn. Now that we understand what crutches are, let's talk about how to avoid them. First, we need to understand what good handling actually is. Good handling is when a car is balanced between both tight and loose, or when it's neutral to the corners. This will allow for faster lap times. For example, let's say you're racing on the Nürburgring GP track and you're having trouble getting your car to handle properly on tight corners. You might be tempted to add more negative camber to the front wheels, but this can actually make the car more unstable on the straights. A better solution would be to adjust the front spring rate. Tuning a car is like a puzzle. Each piece has to fit together perfectly to make the whole picture work. Now crutches, are like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It might work a little bit, but eventually you're gonna end up making things worse. The key is to find the right pieces and make them fit together seamlessly. There are many mechanical crutches that we can discuss, but as I mentioned earlier, driving styles can also become a crutch. Sometimes these crutches will allow an experienced racer to complete a race without needing to come in for a pit stop but they are also used by many inexperienced racers to work their way around the racetrack. More often than not, these driver crutches limit the performance of the car and the driver. The most common driver crutch that I see comes as a result of the reaction to the way a particular car needs to be driven. As the car enters a corner, the driver turns the steering wheel until the car starts to move in the direction of the turn. Often the driver will claim that the car is loose around the apex and upon exit but these drivers are not aware of the fact that they are actually turning the front wheels too much in order to overcome a tight condition on entry to the corner. This happens because the front wheels will gain traction as the wheel is turned, but only to a certain point. Once you turn the wheels too much, they give up all their traction, resulting in understeer. Usually, as the steering wheel is turned, the handling balance of the car is reversed as the front traction becomes greater than the rear. To explain this better, I'll give an example. As the driver enters the turn, he simultaneously lets off the throttle, applies the brake, and turns the steering wheel. The steering wheel is turned enough so the front wheels come around the turn. Now if the car is set up too tight, the front wheels are turned more than would be necessary if the car's handling balance was neutral. Because of this excessive angle, the front wheel traction becomes greater than the rear wheel traction, and the car begins to feel loose. This happens so quickly that the driver will swear up and down that the car is loose. The driver will feel a loose condition at the apex and the exit speed will suffer because as the driver begins to get on the throttle, the rear wheels will start to spin. This will often fool the driver into thinking the car needs to be tightened up. One way to find the true handling balance of your car is to roll through a turn well below maximum speed. The amount of steering input needed just to drive around the turn should be mentally noted. 
Next, roll through the same turn at near maximum speed without excessive braking or acceleration. Again, remember the steering input that was required. If the steering input is higher at the increased speed, that means the car is set up too tight. Many people are surprised at the outcome of this test. I suggest trying it out. You'd be surprised how much time and frustration can be saved by doing this simple exercise before you begin the tuning process. Why your car might be tight. In descending order of importance, here are a few reasons your car might be tight when entering a corner. The rear springs are too soft. This will make a car tight because the springs allow too much roll in the rear of the car, which binds up the front end. The front springs are too stiff. This will make the car tight by not allowing the front suspension to roll and work with the rear. You want both the front and rear of the car to pivot around the roll centers in unison, or the car binds up and becomes tight. Using excessive steering angle. I've seen people who use a steering angle kit to reduce oversteer. The problem is that the increased steering angle causes one wheel to steer more than the other, in order to account for the different radii that they experience. This can cause the car to have too much toe in or toe out in the middle of a turn, resulting in understeer, which will make the car feel tight. You're probably thinking to yourself, what's the worst that could happen if I keep relying on crutches? Well, during a competition, the car is only going to get worse as the race goes on and the tires wear down. There's nothing worse than fighting a bad handling car and trying not to spin out. That's not racing, that's surviving. In conclusion, tuning crutches are quick fixes that might improve your lap times, but they aren't necessarily the best solutions. They limit the overall performance of your vehicle and can prevent you from reaching your full potential. By understanding what good handling is, identifying and avoiding these crutches, and relying on solid theory to support suspension changes, you'll be able to take your racing to the next level. I know there are many different crutches being used by many different racers. These are only a few of the ones that I've seen recently. If you have any questions or want to share your own experience with tuning crutches, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tips and tricks on Gran Turismo 7. Thanks for watching.